All right, so in this video, I'm going to go over a fairly important result, um, which is perhaps not stated in the textbook, but I think it's good to go over anyway. Um, so here's a theorem. It states that if, if f is differentiable at c, so in other words, f prime of c exists, right? Um, so I'm going to start the proof. So the first step in proving this is going to be to suppose that f prime of c, which is the limit as h goes to 0, or actually in this case, this is one of these cases where it's probably more convenient to use the other form of the derivative. The limit as x approaches c, f of x minus f of c, over x minus c. So we're going to assume that this exists, right? And the claim is that this can't exist unless your function is continuous, all right? Um, now, be careful that you don't read this the wrong way. A lot of students will mix this up and assume that this is saying that every continuous function is differentiable. But it's not saying that. It's saying that every differentiable function is continuous. And we're going to see why. Um, so how do we show that f is continuous at c? Um, well, what do we need to show? We need to show that the limit as x approaches c of f of x, we need to show that that's f of c. Okay, well, we're going to do, we're going to do a bit of, of trickery here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is say, hey, Nothing changes to my function if I subtract a number and then I add it back again, right? Still the same thing if I add 2 and then I take 2 away, I'm back where I started. Okay, that's fine. Um, but also, and keeping in mind we want to make use of the fact that we have this limit, Nothing changes if I divide by some number and then multiply by it. Right, I can do that as well. Right, remember in the limit, we don't let x equal c. So this is just some non-zero number. We've multiplied top and bottom. They cancel out. We haven't changed anything. Ah, okay. But now we can use limit properties. This is going to be the limit x goes to c, f of x minus f of c over x minus c times limit of a product is product of the limits. And then we have, we also know that the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. Okay. But what is this limit? Well, this limit we know is f prime of c because we assume that f is differentiable multiplied by c minus c multiplied by 0. f of c is a constant, right? Limit of a constant is just that constant. And adding 0 to a constant doesn't do anything. So we get that the limit is equal to f of c, just as we expected. All right? So as soon as you assume that your function has a derivative at some point, automatically it has to be continuous. Um, this is something that will come in handy from time to time. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, but as I was saying, the converse does not hold. If your function is continuous, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's differentiable. Okay? And an example that illustrates this is the absolute value. Okay. So remember that this is a piecewise defined function. It's equal to x. If x is bigger than or equal to 0, it's equal to minus x. If x is less than 0. Okay. And we know what the graph looks like. So for x bigger than or equal to 0, it's just the line y equals x, slope 1. 
for x less than 0, it's the line y equals minus x, slope minus 1, right? And at 0, the graph comes to this point, right? There's a corner. And you can kind of see from the graph that it's going to be impossible to, to fit a tangent line to the graph at that point, right? There is no best fit, right? One of the ways, if you look at examples of, of graphs with tangent lines, one of the things that you'll notice is that as you zoom in on a point where you've drawn the tangent, um, the graph and the tangent become indistinguishable. But this picture here, however much I zoom in on the origin, it's going to look the same. I'm still going to see this V touching the x-axis, right? The x-axis is not going to become any more of an approximation um, to, to the graph at, at any le zoom level, and, and neither is any other line, okay? So it certainly seems like we can't draw a tangent line at, at the origin, right? We have this sort of corner here. Um, how do we see this? Well, we know that by definition, f prime of 0 should be the limit as h goes to 0, f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 over h, right? But I've got this f of h here. Right? f of 0 is just 0. Um, see that from the definition. But this is f of h. And f of h depends on whether h is positive or negative. So we have to look at left and right-handed limits. And if I look at the limit as h approaches 0 from the left of f of h over h, right? This is just f of h. This is, this is 0. Well, h is less than 0 there, so this is the limit, h approaching 0, of minus h over h. But that, those h's cancel out, just leaving me with minus 1. On the other hand, if I approach from the right, I get h over h, which is plus 1, right? So the left-hand limit, the right-hand limit, they don't agree. And that means that this limit simply does not exist, OK? Um, now, uh, you can kind of see that, you know, if, if you've seen that the derivative of x is just 1, um, then you can kind of see from here that it's going to be 1 and minus 1 um, without going to the definition. Um, but you probably should go to the definition when you're dealing with these kind of strangely behaved things, um, piecewise functions or, or things that are more complicated than that, because um, it, it's not always the case for a piecewise defined function that knowing about the derivative of each piece um, can you be sure that that tells you about the derivative? Maybe, maybe not. Um, when in doubt, you can always fall back on the definition, right? The definition will take care of things in, in every scenario. It's going to tell you whether or not that derivative exists. And in this case, it doesn't, even though, as we know, the absolute value function is continuous everywhere. Okay, So it's continuous everywhere, including the origin, but it does not have a derivative at that point.